standard operating procedures in ClickUp. Now that's a mouthful. First of all, standard operating procedures is already a lot of work, but way worth it. And then also integrating them with ClickUp, which makes total sense because your project management is already happening in there. Why move to another tool and have people spend more time trying to find things? I'm like, we are trying to make things easier here, right? By the end of this video, you're going to know how to lay out your standard operating procedures, how to build them and how to integrate them the best way possible in ClickUp. So you are ready, not the bottleneck in your business anymore. You can hand things off to a team and you are finally ready to efficiently scale your business. Hey everybody, I'm Yvonne with AskEvie.com and I am a business efficiency consultant for digital entrepreneurs. And if you're ready to streamline your business to skyrocket your sales, you are in the perfect place right here. Now, if you're new, go click the subscribe button and hit the bell so you get notified every time I upload a new video. First off, if you are new to ClickUp, make sure you download my essentials guide right in the description so you have a rough overview of what you need to know all around ClickUp and its capabilities. Today in specific, I want to talk standard operating procedures with you. Standard operating procedures, also SOPs, are pretty much a map to how you want things to get done, how your business is run, and where to find everything. So why are standard operating procedures important, especially when you're just by yourself, right? Now, not having standard operating procedures in place, even if you are a solopreneur, means you're going to be wasting time with where are things? Where's that client folder? Where's that picture? Which tool did I use? What's the layout? What's the frame? What's that email? And even though in the moment you might not be spending a lot of time and it might just be a few seconds throughout the day, that adds up and suddenly when you are getting to a point of wanting to scale, wanting to take on more clients, wanting to make more money, you become the bottleneck because you are spending too much time trying to figure things out rather than getting things done. And if you have worked with a team before, you've probably gone through the, what do, what, what do you want me to do? How is that? Which tool are we? Which template? What? And suddenly you spend triple the time. You take care of your work. You take care of training somebody and you take care of redoing things because they didn't do it like you wanted to do it because you just didn't have the time to explain to them. That's exactly where SOPs are coming in and they are a godsend. Are they easy to set up in the beginning? No, it's going to take time and it's going to take commitment for you to get it done, but it's it's way worth in the long haul, especially if you want to grow your business and if you want to scale. Before we dive into the nitty gritty and I show you how this seamlessly integrates with ClickUp, tell me, are you ready to kick SOPs and really streamline your business? Comment below and say SOPs for the win. Let's talk SOPs in ClickUp. First off, SOPs in ClickUp are utilizing their documents feature. So no matter where you add, you always can click the view tab on top and add a document view to that. Now, that means if you do it that way, that your documents and that specific SOP is going to be attached wherever you are. So before we dive into all of that, let's make sure we clarify where you should attach those documents. Because initially our overlaying SOPs for the business in itself and how we handle certain processes were attached to the everything folder. The problem is if you are working with the VA or other team members that just have guest access, they are not going to see that up there in the everything folder. So you can go down into your documents view and right there you are going to see the documents you already have there. If you don't have any documents there, you're just going to have a blank slate and you can start with a new document right up top. Now, looking closer right here, you're going to see some of these are attached to certain spaces or less. Other ones are not. This is exactly how we handled overlaying business SOPs for everybody to be able to access them. They are not attached anywhere. They are just right here in the documents folder for everybody to be able to see them. As I mentioned before, if you attach them to everything, they won't be able to see them. Then for client specific SOPs, 
Now for client specific SOPs, we either way go in the client space or the client folder matters your setup. So in this case, ask EV business. I have a specific space just for my business things going on and I have my SOPs attached to that. Now, if there is SOPs specifically just for content creation or our new membership coming up, click up in real life or any mini courses, I attach those to the folders and you do so by either way being in the space and adding that view or being in the folder and again, adding the document view right up here. That's the easiest way for you to attach those SOPs right where you want to have them. And if you can't find them later on, again, just go down into your documents folder or right up here, you will see in those spaces which documents are attached to that and there you can find them. Now let's dive into how to build SOPs in here. As you can see, we started out with SOP Ask EV and some of them are just called SOPs. Please make sure you are really clear on your naming convention. We started just with SOPs because we can see where they are attached. Now the problem with that is with the new home view, when you are going down and you are in the docs, it does not show you where it is attached. Make sure naming structure, mention the client, mention what that SOP is for, any kind of those things to help you find your right SOP later on, even in the home view. And even if you cannot see where that document is attached. Now let's dive into the most efficient way to build SOPs in ClickUp. As you can see right here, you can nest documents within documents. So think of that as a folder structure. Right here, social media or content creation, that is our internal flow for your videos right here. We start out with a YouTube video, which then gets transcribed and made into a blog post, which then triggers a marketing campaign. Cool, right? Now, how does this work? We have the main folder of social media, which gives us the naming convention, how our folders named, how our files named, what are assets, the extensions on it, the folder structure, literally everything we need overall to know what needs to get done and how it needs to be named. You can also see right here one of those amazing features in ClickUp that allows you to make SOPs really streamlined and easy to use. This piece right here is called table of contents. Every single time you add right down here anything written and make it any of those heading sizes, it gets automatically added to those table of contents. So the first thing I want you to do when you start in a document and setting up SOPs, before you write anything in here, you go right up there and you say plus table of contents and you add that. So going down in that document, every time you put something in as a header one or two or three, it automatically gets moved and added up in the table of content, which then allows anybody that comes here to easily see, okay, what's the folder structure? Yes, I need that information. Oh, there are automations connected to that. Let's see what automation is happening so I don't screw anything up. And they do not have to scroll all the way through the whole document. They can just click on it and get the information they need. Now, that is the overlaying information for that SOP. Now we deep dive into just the YouTube session. What is the naming structure? What is the folder structure? All those kind of things. I don't tell my YouTube guy how to edit. So there is nothing in here. He has that in his business. Then moving into the transfer of the YouTube video into the blog post. As you can see, we have the table of content right on top again. Then the question is, where, where do things go? Where do I find everything? And we linked, as you can see right there, the overlaying SOP. As you can see, we linked the overlaying SOP right in there. That's possible to you. So make sure to use this feature to cross link SOPs to really give your team all the information they might need, even if it's referencing something that just distantly has to do with a task they're working on right now. You don't ever know what they might need to prove, what they might need to check. So have the information right here and you can do so by the share page button on top. And as you can see, you can do a private link. You always get that one, but you also can set this public. Now, public links allow you something else. 
You can build a team onboarding procedure. You can guide people through the setup, where do they find things. You can integrate videos and tasks and all those things and grab a public link to that client onboarding or team onboarding SOP, share that, pull them in and they can start educating themselves rather than you sitting there three hours teaching them what they need to do and where and how and what. You just swoop in after they work through and answer any questions they might have. Now, when it comes to building SOPs, when we scroll further down, make sure you link everything. We use Temi for transcription because it's about the only tool that's AI based that understands my accent. I use Temi and I linked it right here so that when my VA comes in, it's like, okay, I think Evie is using Temi or is she using Rev? She doesn't have to think about it. She can just click and it sends her right over to the website. And LastPass then allows her to log in and get things, whatever she needs. Then I also link my YouTube channel. Again, VAs work with multiple people. Don't assume they remember everything. My YouTube channel is linked right here. And then again, she can log in through LastPass or because she has editor access. We also integrate videos in those SOPs because it's so much easier to see something on a video and being walked through than having a to-do list and trying to explain what's happening. That in combination with screenshots just makes your SOP bulletproof. Now give your team the, now I would recommend to give your team the ability to update those SOPs. If things change, if things suddenly look different and the button is just somewhere else, tell them, hey, jump right in, take a couple new screenshots or record a new video and please update the SOP. That way you always have an ongoing and updated repository of all of your workflows, all of your processes and everything you ever need. So to round everything up, with your overlaying SOPs, I recommend do not attach them to anything. That way you ensure no matter if your team comes in as a guest or as a full member, they can see it. Make sure your naming convention is clear because if people go to those documents through the home view, you're not going to see any association with it. And you really want to make sure people easily can find that information. Add your table of content. First thing when you start an SOP, so whoever comes in can easily find the information they are looking for. And last but not least, go have some fun with it. Do some video, do some screenshots and allow your team to update it when necessary. If you haven't done so yet, make sure you subscribe and hit the bell so you get notified every time I upload a new video. And if you like the video, give it a thumbs up. That triggers YouTube and tells them, hey, this video is awesome and puts it in front of other people that might just enjoy it.